Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, very awesome, fantastic people, leaders from Mrs. Ashura due to members of staff of the Anti-Gravity Group to all participants who have joined us from all over the country. My name is Isaac Aldousman. I am the founder of the Anti-Gravity Group and then the executive president as well. I am really particularly delighted and humbled and really, 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 really delighted to actually have all of you on this call. I can't wait for this to actually get uh, rolling. So, um, I would just quickly just say uh, a couple of things that we, have, we actually have lined up. So, um, I have my my co-pilot, my co-partner, my co-anchor, um, Ayo, who I actually works very close with me. So, Ayo is our manager for impact, for social media, for content development, for uh, stakeholder experience. So. I I just want to say hi quickly because yeah, they're all going to be looking forward to actually listening to you all through. So I is actually cuter than I am. I is also more fluent than I am. So the boring old ancestor me, at a certain point, I will drop off so you can listen to I all through. So I can you just say hi to the folks on the call? Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to our event today. My name is Ayo. I am Day to Witton, and I am delighted to be your host for today alongside Isaac. So we are thrilled to have you all join us today. Please, I hope you all came prepared. Welcome, <laughs> because we have a lot for you. Yes, so welcome and it's nice having you all here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have spot on, bang on the money. So I, at a certain point, I will just drop off and I have we want to actually you know take us to our destination yeah okay so without further ado i'll just run through quickly in terms of um what we have um on our radar what what we have for you so basically what i'm actually just doing right now is the whole work on um and then i would also do the agenda as well so i have actually come in to walk you through some of the you know small subtle safety program principles that we that we have and then she will also take us through the intro for our guest speaker. But let me just say it now. So for for me particularly, it's it's, it's a very emotional one, it's a very emotional and sentimental one. Naturally, I'm not a very emotional person. I'm not a very sentimental person. But this one is really really very close to my heart because Miss, Mrs. Ashwaju is actually okay. So she was my school mother when I was in the University of Lagos. She's still my mother as we speak right now. So uh, so so personally, I'm really honored. I'm delighted. I'm excited to actually have her. Uh, on this call and just like the rest of you i will be listening very keenly and i look forward to learning from her so like my friend would always say every day is a, is a classroom every experience is a lesson and everybody you meet is a teacher so i at my very old age trust me i'm here to learn i will listen and take notes you know, in terms of everything that she actually says All right so she'll walk us through in terms of our series around, you know, the transition, the, the, the entire chasm, you know, moving in terms of that, you know, journey from high school to you know, tertiary institution, whether, you know, you are pursuing a degree in the university or in the polytechnic or in the college of education, it doesn't matter. She will be sharing our uh, over 30 years of experience, you know, with you having been a proper certified professional university counselor, you know, in terms of, you know, working and advising students for three decades and much more and being you know a school administrator she was um at a certain point um, the registrar at the university of lagos and then she's also a leader you know in her own right as well so i really honestly look forward to it and i am hoping that all of you you know are doing the same as well and then hopefully you can all learn and then we'll come back in terms of you know um Akadabu. i will come back to actually walk us through that uh, very very briefly and then we'll do a sort of interactive you know uh, question and, and an answer session where we open it up to you for you to ask questions and then hopefully yeah, Mr. Mr. Ashwadu can give you all of the distilled you know um responses and answers with respect to all of those questions and then hopefully yeah we can wrap this up i can't wait i, I really look forward to it and at this point um Ayo, let me hand it over to you thank you and uh yeah have fun thank you very much isaac that was a wonderful introduction all right, before we proceed, I would like to take a moment to address the safety and ground principles. So the first one says, not safe to join while driving. Make sure you are joining from a safe place and an ergonomically relaxing space. The ground principles states, please be ready to learn and collaborate. Like I said earlier, hope you all came prepared. 
be ready to learn and collaborate and kindly ensure your mic is muted. If someone is speaking, please kindly ensure your mic is muted. Then if you want to speak, use the raise your hand button. It's on the screen. You can all see it. It's just like this, like a palm. Use the raise your hand button if you want to speak. And lastly, make use of the chat box as well. The chat box is on your screen as well. If you want to talk, you want to type, you want to say something, we're actually going to use the chat box like during the event. So please make use of the chat box if you want to say anything, if you have anything in mind, anything you want to say, please use the chat box. Or if you would like to speak, use the raise your hand button. So now it's my honor to introduce our speaker for today. You all can see how pretty she looks. So I'll just do the brief introduction. Her educational background, she attended Badagri Grammar School and Comprehensive High School, Ayetulu. I hope I pronounced that very well. And a second class upper degree in guidance and counseling from the University of Lagos and a master's degree in educational psychology. Her career path worked as a teacher and guidance counselor for Lagos State Government then transitioned to University of Lagos, eventually becoming a director in 2023. That is a lot of achievement. <laughs> yes, you guys should keep the clap, clapping coming, please. Then the administrative expertise served in various units, including university counseling, student affairs, admissions, academic affairs. Wow. <laughs> I hope you all came prepared. International relations and staff training leadership roles, headed the counseling unit and admissions office, implementing significant transformations. And now her personal life, married with children and grandchildren, deeply passionate about helping you. Yes, that one is very true because she's actually here to help you all, to help you transition your way from high school to tertiary institution. Like I said earlier, I hope you all came prepared. So. Now we'll move on to the main reason why we are here, our panel discussion. So please, I want to see the hands again. Let's give a round of applause to Mrs. Aderonke Josephine Ashiwaju as she takes the floor and walked us through how we are going to move from high school to tertiary school life. Ma, mommy. Good evening. Yes, ma. Good evening. I want to appreciate uh, the executive president of uh, anti-gravity for this initiative. We are in an age where we need more of people like him who are so selfless and are interested in the lot of the upcoming generation. Thank you very much. And for the young ones that took time to come out, not to play uh, PlayStation at this time or play on social media, but to invest in themselves. I also say thank you and I congratulate you. For all the members of the team of Akadabu, Anti-Gravity, and everybody that has been involved in one way or the other to make this happen. Thank you very much. So on this note, I want to uh, say, I want to ask a question. Why are we here? Why are we here? Why have, been, have we been given an opportunity to gather? And it is to learn, because learning ends in the grave. I wish I had this golden opportunity that you have. To be given guidance, to be led, to be led. into uh, settling down in the university, college of education, polytechnic, or whichever post-secondary school institution that we call the tertiary institutions. I wish I had this opportunity. Thank you very much. So now, uh, the objectives of this presentation are three folds. The first is to provide guidance for the smooth transition and navigation of students from secondary schools to tertiary institutions. There are levels. We have the pre-primary, we have the secondary, the senior, and the primary, we have the secondary. All this, we have teachers, we have other significant adults that are interested or paid to monitor us, to mentor us, to guide us, to teach us, to discipline us. But by the time we are crossing over to the tertiary institution, these ones don't go with us. We go on our own. Hence, this is the importance of this guidance, so that there can be a smooth transition and the transition can be seamless. And then the second objective is to introduce the beads into the lives and pursuits of uh, the participants through an expose on the ideals in tertiary institutions. Ideals, beams, I will use them interchangeably until I'm able to ex explain what I mean by beams. So to, pre to prevent future derailment among participants through sharing of some real life experiences, misadventures of some uh, students in tertiary institutions. 
So I want to break down what do I mean by beam? Because you'll be wondering the beams and its adventures in the tertiary institution. I'm, I'm sure many of you are not too familiar with the word beam or beams. When you go to a building site, you see the civil engineers casting the reinforcement. You see them mixing concrete and giving some columns, pillars, to support or carry the structure. These are beams and pillars. I will explain uh, in details shortly. So I go to what I call breaking it down. What do I mean by breaking it down? Trying to explain the terminology beam because it is it is what we are going to dwell on and build on. So the word beams was used in objective number two and in the title after careful comparison of its suitability over other words which could not similar meaning such as budgets, guidelines, secrets of success. And then what do I mean by the word beams? I have two meanings for them that are very relevant for today's discussion. So the first uh, meaning I'm going to share is a long study piece of squared timber or metal used to support the roof or floor of a building. And a lot of times we use concrete. Now, uh, these beams, they are the pillars, like I said, the support system of buildings. So they are to reinforce or fortify a building. So anti-gravity is building lives, not houses. So how is it re relevant to you? How is that word relevant to anti-gravity? Anti-gravity is building lives and it's fortifying lives. <laughs> Have you heard of collapsed building? It's a common phenomenon these days. In Lagos, houses collapse, people's lives are claimed, a lot of waste in their resources. So lives, so as buildings collapse because they don't have proper reinforcement, they don't have proper structure, they don't have proper support system, lives can also fall. Lives can also fail. Yours will not fail and it is to prevent that failure that we are here. Then the second meaning of the word beams is that a beam is a ray or shaft of light. You can imagine where there's no light and everywhere is very dark. You cannot move because you don't know what is ahead of you. You don't want to run into something, had an head-on collision with a wall or an object. So your movement is slow. You don't even know what is lurking in the dark and uh, your safety is important. So you might want to stand in one place or if you are an, uh, an adventurer, if you're very adventurous, you can run in, you just decide to move slower speed actually and then you can get into trouble maybe you fall down you trip on something and all of that so now the absence of light means darkness darkness is dangerous as dangerous are unseen but light dispels darkness and it gives direction it gives rays of hope and that's another reason we're here akadabu is providing beams to illuminate your paths and give that you give you directions thereby preventing falling or failure uh, i hope that is quite noted so now, having established and expanded the word beams and uh, stated, having stated its uh, relevance and the uh, uh, relevance to what we are discussing today, uh, we have laid foundation for the presentation. So now we are going to state precisely what are these beams, and then there, I will say they are the ideals you need in your takeoff and sojourn in the next level. So, what should you know before you take the matriculation oath? What information do you need to uh, do you need for a safe flight? I said flight. You are not flying anywhere. You are walking on land. But I want to liken this to an experience of somebody who bought the flight and is traveling somewhere. Somebody comes out and in, I mean somebody stays in the cabin and announces, "Is the captain? Is going to do this? Is going to do that?" Another one comes and tells you, "These are the safety uh, tips. If this happens, you do that and all of that." These are the ideals so that you can have a smooth trip. And then so for, for your stay and successful sojourn, successful pursuit of your academics, and for great success, success, the kind of, the one you're going to, the person you're trying to emulate, the mentor and the visioner of this uh, initiative, uh, Isaac Audu Usman. He finished from here, from the University of Lagos, with a 4.83 CGPA, not just an ordinary first class. That means he had 4.83 out of 5 in his four years sojourn and i'm sure that is what he wants you to achieve while here at the end of the final year he had four jobs and i was asking him you have a job with access bank you have a job with zenith and maybe two other two others why are you not picking which one are you picking and he said no i am not going to i'm not pursuing this it is shell i want he knew his onions and he worked for it so he wants you to be uh, as hot as he is as committed he does not want you to get your fingers burnt and that is why we are here 
So now, what are these bits, the pillars that will hold you and ensure that you don't miss your goal? So the first one is set clear goals. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a confession here. I went to school because my parents wanted me to go to school. I didn't fail because failure meant serious discipline for me. My parents did not spare the rod, so I was just going to school so that I could pass my exams and move from one level to the other. I didn't dream of any area until my final year in the secondary school. And I was given money to buy jam form, but I did not. I paid for uh, one polytechnic. I wanted to read teaching and hotel management. I was an art student, I was not guided. But in this case, you are lucky if you didn't have a goal before now, like I said, I congratulate you for being here. You can start setting your goals. What do you want to become in life? Now, education is a means to an end. What do you want to achieve in the university? And then what do you want to achieve in each year, in each semester? What is your uh, anticipated or predetermined uh, or goal CGP? We have, have 5.0 now as, as the in thing. Last year, the best graduating student of University of Lagos got 5.0. So you can also achieve same. And I'm sure he had his own beams, his, his pillars, and his support system. So define your academic goals and your personal objectives. What do you want to achieve in life? This semester, what do you want to get? Do you want an A? In, 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 do you want A in all your courses? And then when, once you set this goal, you'll be focused to achieve. But when you don't have a goal, you are just like kite that is suspended in the air. The wind blows it this way and that way. So um, attend your classes regularly. Don't miss lectures, tutorials, and seminars. Like I said, there are no class teachers, but there are ways of checking on regularity in classes. In the University of Lagos that I'm sure of, if you don't have 60% attendance, you will not be allowed to do exam. In addition to that, when you go to class, there are some vivid examples that lecturers will use to teach you that no amount of notes you copy can explain. And then the person whose notes you are copying, if he's not a good note, uh, note taker, you, you now go and borrow his notes and copy the rubbish he has taken. So why do you want to borrow notes when you can go to classes and uh, and uh, learn? Also, active participation is very important. I was speaking with a lecturer recently and he said, it is difficult for my students to fail my course because active participation is actually graded. Now you must raise your hand at different times and ask questions so that you can encourage her so that she knows she's actually doing it. And then she's able to watch those who are not active and they don't get the right marks. So uh, in addition to that, ask questions, seek uh, clarifications. Then manage your time effectively. Hello, procrastination is the thief of time. You don't live for what we don't live for later. What you can do today, because time cannot be banked. You cannot save it in the bank. Once you don't use it, it, it goes. So please try to develop your personal timetable. Create a, a schedule and stick to it. Prioritize tasks and avoid procrastination. So seek help when needed. Sometimes they teach you some things in class. We don't all have the same foundation. We're going to have the best and the best in your class. Some people are hotter than you, even when you are the local champion in your school. So when a topic is taught and you don't understand, create, I mean, raise your hand, ask, excuse me, does it mean that if I do this that way, I'll be right? Or did you mean to say this or that? The lecturers are paid to serve you. Please don't keep quiet. Ask questions. So then seek help, reach out to lecturers, tutors, classmates for support. Don't die in silence and don't suffer in silence. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Stay organized. Keep track of assignments, deadlines, and study materials. Stay organized. I'm going to give you an example of a young man that prepared for a very beautiful course. It was the cheapest course for that semester, and he was sure he was going to get an A, but because he was disorganized. He copied the timetable wrongly, or maybe he forgot. And then the exam was supposed to finish at 12. He got there quarter to 12, thinking it was to start at 12. He had an automatic carryover. And that means an F in that course because it was not organized. So practice active learning. What do I mean by active learning? Please, when you come to the higher institution, don't read. Because reading is not what will save your life. You have to study. And when you are studying, you are learning, extracting facts, figures, information, knowledge from your materials and uh, your study materials. And for active learning, you must use your jotters. Jot down the points that you know. And before you begin to jot, close your notes at a point. Try to recall recite what you have learned or try to work out you know uh, uh interpret formula and try to see how you can interpret questions and see whether you are actually actually getting anything so i don't wait till the thing the pudding is ready and it is tasteless as you are making it as you're acquiring the knowledge you're ensuring 
that you are actually getting from there. Then um, connect, build a support system, connect with your friends. Don't connect to go and learn from them. You all paid the same fees. The fees. When you go there, go and teach them. You would have studied on your own. Then you go and use them to experiment, to see your flow, to see what you can remember, what you have forgotten that you need to go back and study. So by so doing, uh, joining friends, even like that man that missed this lecture, if he had friends, if he connected and he had a support system, they would have looked for him before he missed his exam. So take care of yourself. Take very good care of yourself. Don't have any burnout. Don't stress yourself when exam time table is out. It will not be funny to say that some students don't bother preparing for exam until the timetable is out. And if that is what you do, you are you are having uh, a crash program and the result is always full of crisis. So uh, take care of yourself, balance your academic life with your social life, physical life and mental well-being is very crucial. Don't get stressed out. Now embrace opportunities, take advantage of scholarships. Some of you need scholarships like, like no other person because poverty or lack can be a major hindrance to your success. So take advantage of opportunities for scholarships. Search the internet. And then there are advertisements from time to time. I know the, there's a scholarship for those who are in 200 level, those who did jump last year, from um, Stambi KBTC, it's closing today. So uh, if you know anybody in that category, so what I'm saying is be actively searching for scholarships so that you can make some money and then be able to sponsor yourself, pay your way through school and buy your study materials. So um, also take advantage of uh, scholarship of uh, the counseling services, medical services. Some of us, when the students are sick, they don't go to the health center, they do self-medication. Going to the medical center means that if the thing, the thing gets out of hand and you now miss an exam or test, there will be a medical report covering you you take it back to you. you uh, sorry, I couldn't do the exam. I was sick. They will not allow that test to count against you. or And then they will take good care of you. So stay flexible. Be open to new experiences, to new challenges and feedback. Don't be rigid. I don't read in the night. There was a student, our one of our best students uh, years back, who didn't know how to read, study the night when she was in secondary school. Well, she didn't have so much to, uh, to cover. But getting to the university, she still stuck to that culture, that habit of I don't read it tonight. Then she was challenged by a group of students that would gather in, the, in her room, dance all the day. They were dancers. They would dance all the day and then they would go to their rooms and sleep. But the leader of the dancers would stay awake and read or study overnight. So she now felt, well, if I could read, study during the daytime, like this one's dancing in the daytime, if they used all their energy and this one is still able to study overnight, why don't I try? She must have also finished with a kind of crazy grade. You know, when I say crazy, you know, you, you know the, the young ones say bad, bad to mean good. Grade of like 4.8 something. She finished with geography. Very petty, young and uh, smallish person. So now uh, I've mentioned some of this and I want to say that uh, you need to uh, take notes of misadventures. And I, I want to mention what these misadventures are without wasting much of our time. I call them distractions, actually. They are called distractions and they are obstacles to learning, which you must be aware of and avoid. First of all, we have absenteeism. Uh, sorry, abuse of liberty. You are now a big girl. You are not in school. I mean, your parents are not here. Your teachers are not here. So you are at liberty to do whatever pleases you. And what does that mean? It means that you are supposed to be your own check, but you are not there for yourself. You miss lectures. You are there partying. You are just a guy away. And then if you are unlucky to have a car, I said unlucky to have a car because others will call you. There's a party you need to attend. You can't afford to miss it. Meanwhile, it is not because you are so important or indispensable, but they need a ride. And if they tell you, I need a ride, will you carry them? No. So you become their driver. So abuse of liberty is the first one. So we have another, you know, in terms of uh, uh, abuse of liberty, we have uh night crawling people go to all parties they go to parties as they are leaving the island they are going to the mainland and i remember there was a crash where everybody died except for one girl but maybe if she died it would be better for her because uh, she became a uh, an invalid after all she had spinal cord injury all because of abuse of liberty you won't tell your parents you're going for an all-night party you won't tell them so took liberty for license and uh, that was it so now I'm going to also mention another distraction, and uh, it is a uh, cultism. I, I want 
an ex-cultist once told me that once you sign into any cult group, that the safety of your life becomes your primary uh, goal in the university. That is not just about academic excellence any longer, because it is just one gram knot. We call gram knot epa in my language. So the thing sounds so the gunshot too sounds like that. Pa. That epa, they give you a they give you gram knot, that's sound. And then you don't want to, to be killed. So if there is a cult war in school, you want to run for your life, run away from school so that you don't die, you miss that test. You cannot attend classes freely. You cannot go for all night study because the uh, other party, the uh, enemy, the other cult group will be watching out for you for your revenge and things like that. Then I'm going to talk about uh, drug, uh, a particular student that died because of uh, involvement in cultism. He had joined a particular cult group. He left that one, joined another one. So the two parties were now worried over him. Then he left school from a very poor home very poor home. He was supposed to be the, the hope of his family. So when he returned to school, we helped him from our office to return to school, his fees, we got it paid, registered, we gave him work study. But he could not sleep in the hostel. He was staying in the construction site and they monitored him. Their surveillance is more than that of GSS, those people. They got him, he was, then he went, he ran upstairs on a, a, a house under construction. He stood on the deck, deck in, and they pushed him from there. He had a big phone. And uh, his own was more than Auntie Dumpty because not only did he break his head, he lost his life. So now we also have uh, another major challenge, which is drug abuse. There was a student that harbored uh, a drug seller in the room. I don't know how the, the security got wind of it. They swept, the, there was a security check, and NDLA got involved. It was taken away. His fancy experience is another story, story for another day. Then he was incarcerated for six months. And when he came back, Mr. Shiwagi helped him to get his reabsorption. And I just forgot about him. I now met him at a function where he was talking about cultism. And he, he told them, everybody, including his parents, lost hope in him. They gave up on him. That was only Mr. Shiwagi that was interested in his matter and got him uh, you know, reabsorbed in the university. So instead of spending two, three years, he can now end, you know, after coming back, you know, then he still finished with a degree that couldn't make him fly, like the executive presidents we have here. So we have uh, so many stories about drug abuse. Then we have uh, peer pressure. You come here, you want to do what others are doing, you want to belong. Belong to who? Belong to which group? You're an individual. Jam gave you an admission on your own. You are not in any caucus, you don't need it. Just be an individual and finish in record time. Because when you have the they distract you. So having said that, I want to also talk, give an example of girls. When you come in here, every man will tell you they love you. Even when your blouse is faded, they tell you it is the best top in town. If they tell you that they hate you, will, they, will, you, will you be their friend? They know what they want, they are looking for. And they just use the word love as a bait and you become their victim thereafter. But there was a, a, an innocent student who was taken advantage of by a, a, a set of serial rapists. I read that in the papers. Serial rapists, not about my university. They were going to court and their stories were, pub were published. 11 men lured a particular girl into a place, raped her, recorded, recorded the, the, the escapade, and told her, anytime we invite you and you don't come, we will release this into the social media. So with that blackmail, she got so intimidated, she could not resist them. They were calling her. Some used condoms, some did not. We just pray she didn't have the HIV at the end of the day. So these boys ended up in jail for like two years. The matter kept recording it was in the papers that's where i read it so it's a real life experience but that girl's life has been ruined as well because she, she went on a adventure a friend invited her let's go and see so so person i've heard of situations where their friends will take their friends to you know set them up and boys will rape them not here no, I, not only, it's a common thing around here that i hear so don't be a victim don't try to belong don't be a big girl then uh we have a uh, poverty now you don't have money, it does not change your, your name, it doesn't change your title. Sometimes the children of the rich also have their challenges. You, you have cars, you have too much money, and these are distractors, you want to buy the best, you want to go and see this movie, you want to go for that social and the other. Then you have friends around you like the swarm of bees, because they are pests of what you have. They are distractors, they won't allow you to be focused. So it's good to have enough, but not having at all should not be uh, a source of derailment. Because the like, University of Lagos did one thing. When fees were hiked, 
this, they pay the fees of those who are not able to pay their fees fully or those who couldn't even pay at all. But you will not know unless you seek for the help of the counseling center. There is no university and most other institutions who have counseling centers. Seek assistance, seek for help, and then help yourself. Seek for scholarship opportunities. And for you to have this opportunity, it's not sold. You have to earn it. It's on merit. So you have to work hard first year. Let your CGPA speak for you. Make sure you have some 4.9, some 5, some 4.5 and above. So that by the time they now even call you for exam, that qualifies you for shortlisting. You now go and prove yourself with that test. You pass, you go for interview other levels until you graduate. And that man, Mr. Isaac, your <laughs> benefactor, your mentor, was a big boy when he was there. He told me he had his uh, humble beginning in 100 level, but he worked through his own hard work, by dint of hard work, and taking advantage of opportunities around him. But you can't take advantage of any opportunity if your results will not speak for you. So, um, a girl, I'm going to give an example of a girl who was so poor, and the man was supporting him, her at a point. Uh, at a point, the man impregnated her and uh, didn't allow her to have an abortion. The man was already married, a local man, and she had to have the baby. She had that one, had the second one, and uh, gave up with her life. All right, the child too is in the university, and that's when I got to know her story through her colleague. She literally finished that she was teaching. But there's a vicious cycle of poverty in that family because now the same thing that happened to the mother is happening to the daughter. She cannot afford to, you know, to meet all the needs of this girl. And the father is not there, he's, he's a polygamist, he doesn't have time for these children. So she used one problem that she had to to um, to create a, to create problems for her daughters because so she has two daughters and the one with the university is in 300 level she also might be going her way you understand because poverty is now a family thing not because it is hereditary but because one person that was poor that didn't solve a problem and uh, appropriately created another problem for the others for her sibling or for your so now um i want to also talk about absenteeism this is the greatest enemy you can have you don't go to classes they won't chase you they won't chase you if you don't go to classes they won't ask for you why didn't you come no you're on your own O Y O or your you're on your own you know why when exam comes what are you going to write if you have accepted yourself and lecturers know when to do impromptu test i'm supposed to teach 500 students i get to class there are 50. the next thing is bring out a virus do this test and those tests are recorded so once you fail in your continuous assessment what is going to save your life because if you are able to secure good grades with a continuous assessment, an A will be so easy for you to achieve in the exam. So we also have um, the policy, like I mentioned, 60% attendance or no exam. So you become a victim of that. Another problem which everybody here could have without knowing is overconfidence. Is it not me? I got A1, straight A's. I got seven A's in my wife. I scored 300. I told you my nephew secured his admission on merit. He passed very well. But he got here and met enemies that were encapsulated in friendship. You know, those things in capsules, they are very bitter. That's why they encapsulate them, so that people can swallow them. It's either they are bitter or if they go, they, they, they get into the intestine before, before they are exposed, they can also injure the health. So friends will pretend and enemies that they, they, they don't have, they are not wicked. They don't know better. So it is their own lives they are living. And they want you to live the life so they can infect you, derail you. So overconfidence now makes you to say, is it not me? I passed jam, I got 320. I came in on merit. I'll do it again. You have forgotten that the best students from Queen's College are here. The best students from King's College are here. From the federal institutions and the international schools of universities. Of all sorts of private schools that have produced top-notch students now the best of the best now converge so there's a convergence of the best out of the best so if you now handle your matter with kids close that's how you also get the results that people that are careless also get so now all the stories i told you the, i call them stories that touch the heart and if a, a content creator gets it or a play playwright and writes a story about it it will be a bestseller novel it will be uh, uh a movie on Netflix, not even Africa Magic. Prime Amazing also we sell with it. You can imagine titles like The Road Not Taken, Regrets and Regenerates. 
missed con uh, connections, what ifs, opportunities lost. These are suggestive titles for those stories that I mentioned. If only slipping away, chances not taken, the ghost of yesterday, unfulfilled dreams, the wrong path chosen, the lost, the lost in the hindsight, the life of what ifs had I known, adventures that went south, misadventures and regrets. They will sell, the movies will sell, but I pray your story is not one of them. And that is why we are here. So your story, I pray, not, you don't just pray, you don't just wish, because if wishes were horses, a beggar will ride. So what you need in this situation is to make up your mind, to learn from the Joneses, from the examples of those who missed it. Then you learn from the examples of those who made it, like Mr. Isaac uh, Aldous man. I have to respect him here, because he's a great man here, even when he's my son, I must give him the respect he serves here. So now, the lives of those people, they can still make it, but the scar, the scar will remain there. The stories remain entrenched in their life stories. If they are writing their autobiographies, unless they want to edit that portion, and that means they have not written the whole thing. I won't, I will not forget mentioning a particular young man. We used to hire him for our rotation programs in the university. He didn't school here. He, he took Indian help till he lost his mind. Then when he was talking to my students, those who, there's a song uh, in my language that says, that person will pick um, things from Lagos to Abuja, from where you are, to Abuja, the pet will pick the uh, things. You know, I want to mean things, containers of uh, beverages and things like that. So the man said, when he was hearing it, he thought it was a joke. But that it was an admission in a neuro psychiatric hospital, Abekuta, and he walked from there to Lagos before they discovered it. It did not happen. He picked stones. Even nylon bags, not only things from Abekuta to Lagos, it's not a small distance. So your story will not be like that, and that's why we are here. Please, a word is enough for the wise. So on that note, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Mommy, please don't stop. We don't want you to stop. It's it's, it's amazing. Like, <laughs> I, I, I know. Looking at the time, 40 minutes, is 40 minutes not spent? Yes, ma'am. Amazing, amazing. I got over to you. <laughs> it's 40 minutes not spent. I can go on. There are stories there, life stories that you can learn from. But I want to find out. Is the 40 minutes spent? I'm looking at the time. Yes, ma, it is. Uh -huh. It is. That's why I Thank you it. very much, ma. Thank yes, ma. No, 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 we can do one or two additional ones, please. I'm really enjoying every every single moment. So, mommy, please, go on. One or two others, please. All yeah, right. Okay. All right. Thank yes. you. All right. So, let me, let me talk about uh, Mr. Adventures. Mr. Adventures. A young lady, in a hundred level, she never wore earrings. No earrings at all. And the name she was bearing, showed that without knowing who the parents are, showed that she must have been the daughter of a pastor. And I found out she was. In her 200 level, there was a strike. People went home. She didn't go home. Freedom. Freedom. Unlimited freedom. And then they noticed that suddenly she just changed the color of her hair to green. Whenever she was tired, she changed it to purple. Ah, ah, what happened? And then she chose to go into a relationship. She did not tread carefully. From a very poor home, the mother was a teacher in a private school. When I say teacher, teachers are not poor. I was a teacher, I was okay. In a private school, they give them peanuts just to maximize their own profit. And they use them like rainwater. So the father didn't have any job. He was a music minister in a church, not even the pastor in charge. So before they knew it, they just noticed that after the strike, she was craving for food. She was crying flasks everywhere. What happened to you, this girl? And then suddenly they discovered she was pregnant. So the whole, she became so poor, that's me started contributing money. That was how I got to know. And after that, she had a baby. And then the mother who had stopped having children and was the sole breadwinner had to carry the child at the same time, look for how to make ends meet. So one day the woman was peeling orange and orange. She had come back to school. As the woman was peeling orange, she just relaxed her tight. You don't need to be told that her heart packed up. She had too much on her mind. Her blood pressure went out of control. So the woman died. Then her problem got complicated. Then the father started taking care of the baby. It was at that point that my son had been telling me. I said, okay, bring her. Let me see what I can do. So they came. When she was coming, she came with the boy. As a counselor, I'm not supposed to judge at all. I couldn't judge. So I just, I was trying to see how we solve the problem 
what I could do. And then I said, why don't you allow this girl, this boy's mother to take the child so that she could, uh, the baby could have maternal care of his sons. You are his school. Your mother is no more. He's now the father. And I was crying. He said, no. And they will not give the baby to them because uh, they have not done the right thing. I said, what is the right thing? They have not come to pay <laughs> right prices or see them. Said, That's not how right prices are paid. And there are procedures for that and all of that. So long, to cut the very long story short, the man died again because he was biting that it too on account of a girl that missed it. And the case got complicated and charity here and there, she was able to. So, not all of them die, but what shame are you going to carry home? Having a child out of wedlock, and it was even a young man who could not afford anything. I found out that the mother was living in one neighborhood and uh, she was selling Tom Tom, Bitter Kula, Kula Nut on a tray. When all, all hope was on that child, you will finish and come back. See the complication. Then I want to mention another case. There's something we call bereavement counseling. I hate, I hate that aspect of counseling. And it was the only once I went. We went to break the news of the death of a boy. And we discovered that when we got to the neighborhood, we packed far away to the university. We now went to the house, he showed us the house. And then when we entered the baby, they said, no, 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 she, the parents are living in the hospitals. As we entered, the mother started to pray. You know, that kind of mountain of fire prayers, binding and casting. This, I, we entered their room. And I was telling myself, this is the thing, the story is not adding up. What is the mother doing in her mother's house? So they couldn't afford accommodation. So the mother gave them an apartment to live in. And that small room had a very humble bed, one chair. There was a very small stove. There was a big onion she had cut part of it was there. Then the sticker of uh, the school uh, station was on the wardrobe. You could see that this boy was the hope of the future, the family's, uh, the family's hope of the future of the family. The only one I ever went to university. When we got to the university and forgot how we left the whole setting. We went to a party and along the road, there was an accident and they died. So I was a junior staff, then my boss, I followed them just to, so that it's only one or two people. We sat on their bed. There was no furniture to take us. So the only furniture was where my boss sat. Then the mother was running in and out to call people because she sensed trouble. That, Why will the delegate come from the university? Because of my son. So my boss started with, she's, she's not a state counselor, so she started with God gives. I just, I matched her leg like I was matching the brake of my car. And they will link all of you here. So I just took over from there. I said, um, we there was an accident and your son was involved. So I go to so so, -so police station. When you get there, ask for so so. That person's name is still in my head, the name of the IPO. I said, when you are going, please don't go alone. Let somebody go with you. No police, they can be found. That was how we left. We passed the buck to the police and we left. You can imagine that, of, that type of death. Dashed hope. Dashed hope. He dashed the hope of the parents. He wasted his own life. And the mother was telling us, the father went to work. Who, who is going to follow me? He just started, he just got this job. It was because we were not okay that my mother gave us a room. A room built against the wall, the fence of the house, called BQ. So please, when you are thinking of your escapades, think about your life and think about the lives of the parents, of your parents. Think of other stakeholders. Others who are hoping on you becoming somebody and lifting up their families. Can I stop now? Can I stop now? Hello? Yes. yes I think I should stop so that we can have Thank you so much, Mommy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Adorunke Ashiwaju. We really appreciate it. Like, this was a very, very enlightening discussion, a very, very enlightening section. Thank you very much, Mommy. We really appreciate it. So right now, we we'll would open the floor to questions. So please, if you have any question for Mommy, use the raise hand button. Then I'll pick randomly and we we'll, would we'll let you unmute yourself and speak. So I am going to check now. I think I, I saw some persons raise up their hand while Mommy was speaking. So I think I'll just call from that list. Um, Peter, a GTM. Sorry, I can't pronounce it very well. I think I I tried. Okay, Peter's hand is not up. Lawal Abdullahi. Lawal Abdullahi, you have the floor. 
Okay, yeah, um, Ekweme, you can type your questions in the chat box. As many people that can't speak, please type your questions in the chat box and we'll read it out for mommy to answer. Then those of us that can speak, please raise your hand. Thank you. So, Lawal Abdullahi, you can ask your question. Okay, I think Lawal is not here. So, we'll has, uh, asked the question. Said, how can I apply for scholarship without knowing the destined university? You will apply in response to advertisements. Apply in response to advertisements. So, watch out for advertisements. And then they will expect you to add your letter of uh, admission. So, you must secure admission before you can apply. There is no application like the one I mentioned closing today. It's time to get to see Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Um, sorry, Good hold on. Lawal, if you're the one speaking, please hold on. Let mommy finish. Mommy, please go ahead. So you will respond. Just watch out for participants. Like in the University of Lagos, there's a student's information platform, um, WhatsApp group, and the other, other, other social media channels where they advertise scholarship opportunities so you just have to watch out where you are not you are, in addition to that go to student affairs and make an inquiries there is no tertiary institution that does not have student affairs so go there make inquiries all right thank you very much mommy before we thank start you. taking questions please we would like to take a session before the question and answer section so please let everyone write down their questions. Like if you want to speak, yes, you will speak, but just hold on, hold your questions. We want to have enough time for the Q and A session. So I'd like to invite uh, the executive president, Isaac Aldo Usman to do us the honors of telling us why you should be on Akadabo. Let's give a round of applause for our executive president. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, thank you. So, um... So, mommy, thank you very much. I mean, um, it's, it's been very amazing. It's been very, you know, awesome in terms of the distant learning, the requisite, awesome, and some, you know, um, insights that you've actually shared. So, thank you, mommy. Even for those of us who are actually already old ancestors, I mean, we can actually learn a whole lot. A lot of the stories that you shared, they struck a part of resonance within me. So, mommy, thank you so very much. Okay, so, um, ladies, ladies and, and gentlemen, uh, quickly, very quickly, because of time. Um, so if you've not yet registered yet on our uh, impact engine, akadabu.com, www.akadabu.com, I just wanted to give you uh, a sense of what we have in store for you and why exactly you need to, you know, go in there, you know, um, sign up and be a part of that particular impact of it. Uh, so first of all, I'll just, I'll just summarize a few things. Um, I was never meant to be born. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was given that opportunity by my, my mother to be here. So that in itself is one that I say to myself, I, I owe her to make this you know count, to be a force for good, a for G, to be part of somebody's life, to give back, to be part of you know impacting lives possibly and touching lives possibly and all of those things. So I, I spent 14 years in Shell and part of the reasons I left Shell was to start the anti-gravity group. And one of the you know initial projects I had to pursue after I left was Akadabu. And Akadabu is very, very close to my heart because I believe very, very strongly within my bones, within my brains, within my nerves that, you know, part of my life's journey, part of my life's purpose is to reach out to someone out there who perhaps may be going through some things I just have gone through when I was very young and passing through school to being able to give them a source of inspiration to say, hey, even you as well can actually, you know, do it, right? So on Akadabu, we say um, it's... Um, it's a platform like um, a LinkedIn for students where you can go to learn, to collaborate, to synergistically, you know, co-create value and impact. So in the first things first, we have the GPA calculator. So for those of you who are transitioning from high school to the university, you can learn everything with respect to what the GPA means and how it affects you. And then if you've been following some of the things I've actually written, you know, you will see instances where I say stuff like, oh, you could have been 40 years, you could have been 30 years, you know, in SS1, you know, 30 years in, in SS2, yes, that will not stop you from being, you know, first 
when it comes to wife, when it comes to metal, or when it comes to the university, it's a different ball game. It's like a shadow, it will haunt you all through. And partly why we're having this whole session, where mom is actually walking us through some of the things you need to work, you need, you need to work on, things you need to watch out for. Because from your very first semester and your very first year, whether you're in the university and the polytechnic and the college of you know education, you need to get it right, you know, from the very first semester, right? So the GPA calculator gives you that, you know, that old ample veritable opportunity for you to understand what you need to do, how you need to get it right from the very first day up to your very first, sorry, up to your very you know final year. We have this open forum where you know you can actually chat with people from different schools like uh, the Facebook, like a LinkedIn, like an IG. But in this particular case now, we're domesticating it to just students where you can co-create all sorts of things, you know, as a student in a group. So like Facebook as well, you could connect and, you know, you know, have, you know, bodies from all sorts of you know, places and all of that. We have scholarships, you know, we have links to scholarships. Like Mommy rightly said, you have to be intentional about it. You need to want it And Like my mom used to say when she was still here, it is he who is hungry, it is he or she who is hungry who goes into a kitchen and cook, right? So if you need scholarships, you need to be intentional about those, you need to be deliberate about those, and you need to do all of the things that you need to be able to, you know, get all of those scholarships. So again, on Akadabu, we have a strong distilled list of all sorts of scholarships, whether, you know, in Nigeria or on the African continent or elsewhere that you can latch on to. So the very next one is uh, school summaries. So um, for a lot of you here, you've already written jam, you are about to enter school. So for your for the for the folks who are coming after you, you can be mentors to them to say, hey, come to our Akadabu. So we have a summary of every tertiary institution in terms of everything they need to know in terms of the university information, the respective courses that we have available, cost of school fees, cost of accommodation, what you have and what you don't have. So it will help you as well when you are you know, filling the jam form and all of those things. The very next one is with respect to the marketplace, right? So you have a junior, you have a conga, you have a GG. But in this case, specifically for Akadabu, we have domesticated it to ensure that it's, it caters to the needs of students. So I, I give you a very good a very good example. So when I was in school, yeah, so mommy, mommy said at the very you know last part of my of my time in the university, because I was fortunate to have been you know, giving scholarships, I was fine. But in my very first year, it was a struggle. It was a struggle to pay my very first year school fee, in, which was 3035 naira at the time. I was one of the last people to register in my faculty. So Akadabu gives you, you know, a sort of marketplace where you can actually, you know, get things like a bed space if you cannot afford one, if you want to support and all of those things. So we 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 have that platform, that very table platform where students who are already in school who want to share things like bed spaces. They want to share things like old notes, old textbooks, and all of those things. They can give those opportunities to very young, you know, folks like yourselves who may not be able to afford the full range of all of those things. And again, like I said, it's domesticated specifically for you as students, as opposed to when you go to a junior or a GG or a conga where you have a plethora of all sorts of things, right? The very next one is race. Is race. So because I struggle through school, part of the things I I want to do out here is to leverage to recognize the networks in terms of the people i have known while i was in senate while i was in shell and the things i've been doing in the last couple of years to bring people who must have struggled through school to say let us come back and let us use the experience the collective experience that we had while going through school to go back there right now to give back to reaching out to students who are indigent so and so and needy and ensuring that we not only pay forward but we are able to touch lives and inspire lives in such a way that we can co-create a sort of orbit of impact and value you know in terms of students who actually need all of those things um finally we we have a cbt platform so for many of you who have already written maybe um utme you may not need this but if you are about to perhaps you know get ready for the post utme for the various schools you're actually about to enter into this platform will help you in such a way that unlike other platforms elsewhere, one, it is very free. And then two, we provide hard, like answers, like really detailed answers in terms of the various questions to tell you why the options that, you know, that we have, why certain options are incorrect and why certain options are correct. So it's like a shortcut, you know, for you to more or less learn as opposed to not just, you know, saying ABC and then you don't know why the answer is B. So I will leave it here because of time. Akadabu is supposed to be like a sort of 
companion for you. And like mommy said, it's supposed to help you shortcut some of the issues and challenges and risks potentially that you may face while transitioning from high school to becoming, you know, a jambite to entering a university or a polytechnic or a college of education. So my sort of minimum baseline advocacy to you is if you are on this particular call right now, if you're not yet on Akadabu, I plead with you to say, come in there. We, we have opportunities for you to actually connect with mentors like myself, coaches, even mommy has volunteered to becoming a professional certified student counselor. So beyond this call, mommy will be there to actually support you all through your journey while in the university, while in the polytechnic. So at this point, um, Ayo, if you don't mind, if we have our video ready. So we are going to play a very, very short video. Um, I think it's about 90 seconds or so. So please, I'd like to crave your indulgence. Just go through it. It gives you a very ample snapshot in terms of what you need to do to sign up to Akadabu. We have a web version. We have a version, you know, if you're using um, Android phones, we have a version as well. If you're using, you know, iOS or an iPhone. So I am, again, thank you and over to you. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is a tutorial video on how to register on Akadabu. You go to your place to and type in Akadabu. Once it opens, click install. When the app installs successfully, you click open. Once the app opens, you can sign up as a student, mentor or a donor. On this page, click create account and kindly choose the option that best describes you. Let's register as an undergraduate. On this page, you'll fill in the necessary details, your first name, last name and your email address and then click next. Once you click next, it takes you to the next page where you have to create a password. Create a password, confirm your password and click next. It takes you to the next page where you have to confirm your email address. Once you've confirmed your email address, you fill in your details and log in. Once you log in, you are good to go. To register using the web, go to your browser and type in www.akadabu.com. When it opens, scroll through and click on the sign up button. On the next page, scroll down and select your account type. Let's register as a Jambite. Fill in the necessary details, your first name, last name, and every other details. Confirm your password. Confirm you are not a robot and create account. After successfully creating an account, you can now fully enjoy all the Akadabu features. So once again, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you all on the platform. I am there. Mommy will be there. Ayo is there. A lot of coaches and mentors and donors are there. So hopefully we can support you all through your journey, you know, while you are embarking on this very solid adventure all through your tertiary institution life. I look forward to you for the rest of the queue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac. Thank you for that wonderful. It was really, really insightful. So now we'll go back to the questions and answer session. All right, um, mommy, before we take others, I found a question. You talked about the, the scholarship that's supposed to end today. Someone was asking that how can they register for that scholarship? Okay, only those who did jump last year, just 23 uh, jump, they, they, they are already in the university. That means they are in 200 level. They are the ones that can apply. All right, thank you, mommy. Yeah, well, then you go to the KBTC website to search. I got the uh, the email and I'm uh, publicizing it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ma. Right now, let's take questions. Like if you have a question and you would like to speak, please raise your hand. So I would call you and you would unmute yourself and speak. Lawal, are you ready for us? Lawal Abdullahi, is he here? Okay, well, uh, all is there, are questions, there are some questions. Uh, yes, we'll take we'll take those questions. I just want people to speak first, ask their questions. Yes, ma'am. Samuel G. B. Ko, please take your question. I was trying to ask, what if you even please I wanted to ask, what if when you are in um distant, you're in the university and you said distraction? What if you have bad lecturers, where say no matter how you read, no matter how you read, just keep on putting as F, F, F. So what's your advice for that particular person? All right. Uh, let me first say that the university is not like a secondary school where one person teaches one subject. We have cost, a, a unit cost system. So in one semester, you can have, and then in the, in the time of uh, the executive president, one man took, one lecturer took one course, but no, no longer, it's no longer so. 
about four lecturers could teach a particular course. So these four of them cannot hit you. There are four teachers, four lecturers to one course. That's one. Two. How will lecturers be failing students? What are they going to derive? The problem is that we usually people don't prepare as hard as they should. Otherwise, with the universities, people are getting 5.0. So why will they want to do that to you? And then if you have given your best, you have worked hard, your continuous assessment is so good, and then you pass your exam. If you think you have, you have been cheated, the counselors will fight your course. They will investigate. So, but it's, it's very easy to push the fault on, on lecturers. And in some situations when the scripts are recalled, you'll discover that there is nothing written that could have saved the life of that student. So please work hard. Uh, I went to the university. He went to the university. Such people are no longer in the system. They have all been sacked. They face panels, disciplinary panels, and they, they lose their jobs. They're not in the system any longer. Not even in this era of social media. They are not here. So work hard, please. Give your best. If your best is not good enough, get help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you, Samuel Thank you, Chibiko, for that question. Um, before we take any more physical question, I would like to read out a question for Mommy. Um, Henderson Anabraba says, Ma, what if you had a bad start in your year one first semester? How can you make it up? That's a very good question. And uh, everybody in this uh, event, nobody will have a bad start because you have a bit. You know the ideals now. You know the distractors and how to avoid them. So I clap for the gravity for preventing failure before starting. You have a good foundation already. Just don't forget this discussion. So now, if in the first semester, this ha it happens. If in the first semester it happens that somebody does not do well, the person is not going to lose anything beyond having weak grades in the first semester. The person can be challenged you don't need to challenge yourself and have a new beginning. Reinvigorate yourself. Call yourself back home. Revise your, your goal. Revise your strategies. Change your uh, your, your learning methods, your, your study habits. Change the set of friends you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are going out with. Identify your challenges. Look for solutions and then look inward to identify the causes of your failure. I, I do that to myself a lot. Why, where did I miss it? What happened to me? Once you're able to pin your hand on it, then you are 50% successful already. But if you don't know how to go about it, meet your course advisors. There are course advisors who are academic advisors. They will advise you. Talk to your counselors. Identify role models among the set before you or seniors in your department. Identify the high performers in your class. Even in first semester, uh, first semester of your year one, you see some people who are very active in class, who are always asking questions, who are always doing very well in tests. You see their scripts. It's not difficult to identify them. So you can you can still pick up and still be the best. You can plot a graph whereby the first year it is the lowest CGPA you can ever have. You keep improving. And even when I'm not very good at math, I know how to plot graphs such that you can monitor your progress, your own program, your progress. Thank you. But if you don't do well for two consecutive semesters in my university, they terminate your studentship. That means year one, you struggle. You got below one. Second semester, you struggled, you got the lower one, you have you to withdraw automatically. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mommy, for that question. Let's take one question from the audience. Nikki Martins. Nikki Martins. Nikki Martins, you can ask your question. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Is Nikki Martins here? I think the person is not available. Okay. Ngu Mimi Tengu. Please, apologies. If I didn't, if I don't pronounce your name well, please forgive me. Forgive me. Or um, I think okay, Mimi, Mimi, please, you can ask your question. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. I'm delighted to be on this show. Should I call the show a meeting? 
sorry i'm not a newbie and it's not really really a question it was in regards to the very first question that someone asked that if you come to school and you are saying all the lecturers are bad and give you f's 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 how are you going to go about that i just wanted to give a practical example so i had this classmate of mine or i have this classmate of mine she happens to be the one talking our class and one of our lecturers noticed that she got an e in a course and caught her attention. In fact, the results were not out, so we did not even know that anything like that happened. It was not an E, a carryover, yes. So he was like, ah, you, you have stayed in the university up to this time, isn't your, um, when you are almost leaving, that you are failing courses. And she was like, ah, she don't know, she don't know what is happening. And I said, oh, there's this course, so you got F in it. And that's how they went on to trace it. When they traced it, they discovered, it was even a course went for an excursion, like it was a practical course. But, well, the woman, she decided to give us these, 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 F. Now, nobody got an A or a B in the course. She's mean like that. Sorry, I <laughs> told me to be like that. So, he fought her course. So, what I'm trying to say is that if you actually come to school and you put down your head and study, and you are, bring, you are coming out with good grades, your lecturers can notice something wrong on your results and fight your course without you even know some people even go behind you and do it but this one they called her physically and she was also involved so i'm just like trying to encourage all of you coming in that your first year in fact all through your um, university is you should try your best to be outstanding and do well so that once somebody notices a fault in your in your results you'll be able to justify it because you have not been failing so why are you failing now Thank you. That's just all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mimi, for that. It was very, very helpful. I'm sure a lot of people have, have gotten something from that. Thank you very much. All right. So let's take another question from the chat box. Um, Ekweme Chivurike says, please, mommy, as a senior counselor, how do you advise a student who wants to build a good study habit to go about it? All right, that's a question that will likely take some time. So I'm going to just kiss it, just give you a few tips. The first one, like I also mentioned in the bits, is to set your goals. What do you want to achieve this semester? What kind of CGPA do you want? And then you have five courses you are offering. Do you want A's in them? Tell yourself what you want. Put it down, stick it to your wardrobe. As you open the door, daily you see it. And then from there, you start working towards achieving the goals. And in 100, out of 100 marks, you have 13 marks as a continuous assessment. So the 13 marks, some of them are, some of the lecturers take note of uh, assignments, tests, and then uh, active participation. So you make sure that out of 30, you are looking for uh, 25 at least. And then you start struggling for 70. So for that to happen, a mediocre just needs like, 15 to get 40. If you have secured 25 over 30, over 30, you just need 15 to get the 40, which is a pass mark for mediocres. But there are some students, if they score C, they will cry like their mother and father died in the car crash because that's below the expectations. And for this to happen, you just need to have your own focus, then your determination. That determination is not everybody can dream dreams. You can start imagining, I want to finish it before class. But are you working towards it? Develop your strategy. Manage your time, draw up your personal timetable and comply. Don't wait for anybody to call you to go and read. Mommy is not here. That is not here. There's no lesson teacher any longer. In the secondary school, there are lesson teachers. This is the time to cut your own teeth on your own and live your life. Run your race. You are the hero of your own story. So you begin when you draw up your timetable, you read and then we call some things effective study habits. There are habits that people have used that are tested and trusted, like taking good notes, studying in private places and the active learning, things like that, overreading, you know, and uh, you know, recall, and then the recitation, review, you know, all of that will help you. And then develop mentors, develop role models, go join study groups where you can have opportunity to revise what you have learned. Then talk to the counselors in your institutions, they will, they will help. Like the young lady, Mimi, Mimi made my day. She really helped us because in the institutions, high institutions, they don't put names, it's matric numbers. So you don't know my name. So how will you feel me? University lecturers will not meet. 
to, to you know, so they will not convert to say, okay, you, you will not graduate. What are they going to benefit? And if anybody tries it, after you have done what you show, university will, will, will speak for you. Just do the needful. Study, study, and study. Don't wait for exam time to be before you start. Slow and steady means the race. And then uh, we'll be able to talk about study habits later on because our time is far, far spent. Okay, thank you very much, Mommy. Mommy talked about I, mentors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. After you, after you, after you. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Isaac. After, uh, Mommy talked about mentors, and I just wanted to chip this in. Akada will actually have mentors. We have mentors on our platform. So if you need any mentor, just quickly go now and register on Akadabu. You find lots of mentors. So you can just scroll through, pick anybody of your choice. You can make your choice on that one. Just pick anybody you would like. If it's their faces you like, if you like their uh, qualifications, it's your choice. So go to Akadabu, download it, and then go through it. You'll see mentors, enough, plenty of mentors for you. So that's what I wanted to say. Isaac, please. Yeah, um, so uh, uh, Ayo, thank you, so, uh, thank you so very much. So, uh, mommy, you, you were you're spot on, bang on the money with respect to if you actually want to have things like uh, B, D, C, you won't have them on your transcript. So, I don't have a C anywhere in my transcript. So, um, all through my my days, I had just you know A's and B's, and I had one D, which was a misnomer, which I fought all through up to the up to the very end. But sadly, you know, it wasn't the path because I. I felt all through that something was wrong because it was a very simple course man management where I, I got extra sheets all through, yet somehow, somehow it was a D. So if you don't want a C on your transcript, you won't have one. So it's as simple as that. The second thing I actually, I actually just wanted to say was I'm dealing with you. Like I typed on um, on our chat. Um, if you don't mind, uh, just give us a, like a couple of minutes. We know, yes, what we designated for this particular call was 19 minutes, but it's been very awesome. It's been very substantive. So, if you don't mind, let's just have like a couple of minutes so we can take those questions and hopefully, the moment we can address as many questions as we possibly can. Yeah, thank you. Ayo, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac. I'll take a question from the chat box. Chizam, Chizarami Piri Uzago says, Please, I want to study nursing, but I didn't reach the cut of mark. I want to change to biochemistry in ESUT. Is it possible that? After 100 level, I will still switch to nursing. That depends on the uh, peculiar policies of uh, universities. In my university, many years back, I'm talking of my student days, people could cross, they could go and transfer from some courses, some high courses to other courses. But now, nursing is selling like hot cake. Medicine, law, engineering, you cannot go from any other faculty to those programs. But you can go from engineering to uh, a pure science degree, or you can go from there to actuarial science. You can go from there to education. You go from high, the high courses to the low ones. But you cannot go to nursing from any other department in the University of Lagos because we are oversubscribed. We are limiting numbers because the, uh, the, the, the professional bodies are monitoring the numbers so that they don't water down the quality of our graduates. So it won't happen here, but it does not mean it cannot happen in other universities. So find out, make inquiry from that university uh, where you are to see if you can do a uh, transfer. And then you can also make inquiries on transfer to other institutions. But uh, to stay here and give you a solution, no, it won't work. It will be an assumption. You have to be sure so that you're not misguided. And it's not about hearsay. Go to the institution, go to academic affairs and make inquiries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mommy. Thank you very much. Okay, we've taken a lot of questions about scholarships, schools. Um, during the preparation of this event, we had to ask some students if they had any question they would like to ask you. So we actually have a question pool arranged for this. So I'll just go through and pick the necessary questions and you could enlighten us more on that. Um, somebody said, I didn't score so high in JAMB. And I want to study a course that requires a high jam score to gain admission. Please advise me on the next steps to take because I do not want to write jam the second time. Okay. Um, it depends on the course you are looking at. If you want to read medicine, you want to read law, and you don't have uh, an adequate uh, score, I will encourage you to not give up yet because there's something we call a uh, post TME that universities, all universities do. So you will have an opportunity to prove yourself through that channel. 
whereby out of 30, you can score 28, 25. They'll find the average eventually. So don't give up yet. Then another channel of uh, jacking up your aggregate is uh, your school star results. If you have A1 all the way, because this is how it is graded, especially in my university. I'm saying this because I was admission officer and I don't want to generalize, but in my university, I'm aware that we based on our admission on 100%, whereby JAM takes 50%. We have 50. The JAM 50% is, is uh, derivable by dividing 400 by 8. So divide your score by 8 to get 50%. That's what is sure. Then uh, our post TME is 30. So if you score like 28 out of 30, you're also good. And then by the time you now uh, you now present your school set, they are going to check the relevance of your, I mean, they're going to pick the five relevant subjects and grade, I mean, if you assess grade, there's a, there's a way they will calculate your, uh, we break it down to so now have 20%. So, I mean, 20%. So 20 plus 30 makes our 50. So if you have a good white result and you have, you're able to prove yourself again in pursuit theory. And I'm telling you, my son went to do jam one year and somebody came and said, okay, uh, they're going to do negative marking. Anything you're not sure of, don't, don't tick. And he was misled. But by the time he got home and told me, I was so disappointed, but I just encouraged him. And I said, look, just make sure you do very well with uh, your pursuit theory. He did that and he still came in on merit. So no giving up. Then in addition to that, I want to say if it is medicine, if it is uh, law, any other thing, just any other course, if age is on your side, finish this first degree and then use it to come in as uh, a direct entry graduate, depending on your age, depending on your goal. If you really mean you want to achieve this goal. Otherwise, if your job score is low right now, lower than what your university will take for that course, this is the time to change your, your institution on jam uh on the jam site you can change your institution to another like uh in the university of lagos if you chose university of lagos and right now you know that your chances of entering are very low use your own state university what do i mean by that state the state you come from the competition there will not be as keen as that of lagos because everybody in lagos does not want to go out the people outside want to come here so it's a it's a very competitive admission that we are doing here but there are some universities where you have better chances and I'm going to say this so that I can enlighten everybody. If you are from the Southwest, University of Lagos will favor you because if you don't come in by merit, you'll come in uh, with a full catchment area if you are from the Southwest. And people from Gobe, if they don't come in on merit, catchment will not work for them. But ELDS, we have some states categorized as ELDS, educationally less developed states. Quara is part of it. Bayelsa is there, uh, Kogi, and some other states. I think Abia. So, ELDS, they, you know, they, they, there's a quota for them. If you are from some states in the north, you can get the rock bottom score and still be able to enter. So, find out. Uh, so, so, look at look into your peculiarity. What course? Which university? How can they competitive, uh, competitive is the admission? And then, if your chances are not right, change your institution to your catchment area or to other universities where the admission is not as keenly competitive. i give you an example. In the particular year, we had 3,910 applicants for law. I was the admission officer. And our total quota for law was 270 for, for UTME, the remaining for direct entry. So at that point, people will still be queen of the we running about, but it will not work. So change of institution might be the solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, mommy. Thank you very much. You. Um, somebody also asked, say if you pass JAMB and you fail post TME, what is your fate? All right. If you pass JAMB and fail post TME, that university will not take you. Because JAMB score is an external examination. Yes. The O level result is an external examination. It is this only UTME, the post TME, that the university has as a window of screening its students. So, whatever you are bringing from anywhere, we don't know how you got it. So, if you fail our exam, JAMB will not. Will not hold us, will not query us for not giving you admission. I remember there was a time before the CTME was introduced, a student came to me, greeted me in English, we greeted ourselves, said, Mommy, I don't want to speak my language here. Said, Mommy, let us speak in Yoruba. Can you imagine? He could not speak. And that was in the era where there was no CTME. But now with CTME, such people are filtered. So if you don't pass, you can't come in. So if you want to pass, 
carry your jump syllabus. The constituency questions are, uh, are selected from the same syllabus. Carry your, um, in University of Lagos, we, we look at English, Maths, and General Paper. If you pass, you come in. If you don't pass. So why do we not? I mean, no university has done constituency this year. So now that you know, go and prepare it. You can still make it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mumi. Um, one last question from here, then we'll take um, Ekweme's question. This person said, must you go to a university after Polytechnic? Is it a criteria? Life is about choices. It is what you want that you will get. It depends on what you want, but I don't know why you want to limit yourself. There was a time when people had uh, Standard 6. That was the era of my grandfathers. And they were called educated people. The first degree now is so so common that even HND is so common. Why do you want to stay at that level? Why you should look at the uh, at, uh, you should you should, you should re reach out for the skies. You should be an eagle, fly high. Don't limit yourself, please. After uh, polytechnic education, there is uh, there are some institutions that do uh, postgraduate uh, post uh, post uh, HND uh, diploma. You can go for that. And after that diploma, you can get the first degree. But the problem in the Unilag is that <laughs> even as a staff, if you come in with HND, you go and do that postgraduate diploma, you come for your master's. When we are doing internal promotions, they will not take you because they will still ask you for that first degree. Otherwise, you are given executive leader. You are young people, there's no old man or woman around you. Please don't limit yourself. The sky should be your first tool. Don't limit yourself at all. If I have that first degree, now people are not waiting. I, I, I had my master's early in life. My mother said, no master's, no marriage. So what are you telling yourself? If my mother could tell me that at that time, I quickly went for my master's and I married the following month after my exam. So now, I, let, me tell, let me tell you a joke that I cracked. That first degree is now, and that uh, other degrees, other certificates are now pure water. That's such as water. First degree is table water. Then, uh, what do you call it? Master's is wine. And then you want to jump in, go for your PhD. Be at the top of your game. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mommy. Um, let's take the last question before we end for today. Ekweme Chivurike says, please, I have another question. Mommy, please, what is your advice for students who struggle with ADHD, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, ADHD? in terms of building their confidence and study habits? Okay, uh, it's always good to seek expert advice. One problem young people have is that those people that are paid to take care of them are left unconsulted. Once there's a peculiarity and you know it, you go for counseling. If there's any challenge from any quarter, they will speak for you. They will write that this is our client, he has been uh, well, he has been having this challenge from so 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 time. Kindly accord the necessary uh, assistance. That is one. They can also refer such people to higher levels for clinical uh, for clinical uh, psychology or even uh, teaching hospital that is affiliated to the university. That's one. Another thing is that if you have that attention deficit by now and you are able to, to be in this forum, you have. You have survived to a large extent. So what have you what have you been doing that has been working for you? Try to make sure that you, you hold on to those skills that have been working for you and consult whenever you are you have challenge. There are you can read up anything on how to uh, improve your focus. Read up on how to improve your focus and just work on yourself. Self uh, self-help is the best form of help. I'm speaking to you. Many years back, I was so fast in speaking. I didn't see a speech therapist. I talked to myself. So I said, okay, if you are too fast and people are not hearing you, say it again. So that brought another problem. I was now stammering because I'll tell you, okay, then I'll quickly say, okay, in case you didn't hear the first time. And I talked to myself. No, I was not yet in the university. So and it's not the counseling that I read that helped me. And at the stage, I saw that I was now beginning to stammer. I, I spoke to myself again. No, don't, don't stammer. Just slow down. Take what you are saying one by one. And that's how I've helped myself. I grew up a very timid person because my parents were both disciplinarians. At the point I'll be talking and I'll be hitting myself, I'll be fidgeting. I didn't tell, I didn't see any therapist. I worked on myself. Identify your weaknesses. 
work on them where you cannot overcome talk to professionals the counselors are there when they help you to a point they point finger to the next level that is referral but more than anything help yourself build your own confidence when you see something is taking your attention you call yourself back do a to-do list for the day where and then try to comply if you see you are drifting go back and tell yourself call yourself by your name no 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 you are not doing what is needful do the needful you call yourself back and you'll be okay thank you very much mommy i thought that was the last question but we just got another question <laughs> oh. okay let's take this last question and then we we'll end for the day um jamai said good evening ma so there's this school i plan on attending niit after finishing my courses there they said i'll have to go back to either rsu or uniport to get my bsc certificate so what do you think ma and how long do you think i will have to stay in school to get the bsc certificate the bsc if it is your ultimate goal it is worth waiting for it is worth pursuing because the NIIT, if I understand well, will be a diploma course. So after obtaining your diploma, no matter how long it will take, I want to believe they should be able to give you admission for direct entry. So you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, depending on um, what you get. So if the diploma is able, if your university, the university of your choice accepts it as a, a, a requirement for direct entry, then you can be considered. But even OND, some OND, HND are not given admission of direct entry because they didn't meet the, they didn't get the grades expected, distinction or upper credits. So if you have a pass or lower credit, you still go through uh, UTME to come into the university. But let me just say here that since we are not sure, it's a matter of assumptions. We don't know whether it's a diploma, we don't know whether the university will take. If the ultimate goal of your life is getting the BSc, it is worth pursuing. Please do, so that you don't have regrets. And this is the time. Thank you very much, Mommy. Thank you very much. Um, peace, Agaya. Agai 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 I don't think um, your question, uh, Mommy will be able to answer because yeah, Mommy is, her, the way she works is Unilag and your school is in Delta State. So consequently, we'll have more of these events where we go around different schools. Next week, we'll have another one. So for some people that are asking, that when are we going to have another event you want to join ah, please don't cry <laughs> don't cry we'll have another one next week and we are inviting professor chima wokocha the um, dean of student affairs of the university of potakot he would speak peace agaya please don't cry thank you <laughs> okay thank you very much mommy before i go into what we have next week let's give a round of applause to mommy for this very very insightful and exciting adventure thank you thank you everybody Thank you, mommy. I Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, ma and then please clap for yourselves as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. Um, it was really nice having you all here. Please, before we go, I'd like to extend our invitation for next week. You can see it on the screen. I'm sharing it there from high school to tertiary school life, making the transition. The next destination is the University of Port Harcourt. As many of you that are going to attend University of Port Harcourt, this is for you. It's for everybody, actually, but then specifically for University of Port Harcourt because you see the man on that screen, he would answer every question you have about the University of Port Harcourt, every single question you have. So if you have a friend that is going to Uniport, that, or that wants to go to Uniport, the University of Port Harcourt, please invite them, tell them about it. It's going to happen next week by 5 p.m. Next week, Saturday by 5 p.m. Do not miss it. Please do not miss it. Thank you very much. And peace, you said what of Delta? Yes, we'll do for Delta States. Like I said, we are going round and round. We had the first one with mommy today. The next one we'll have will be next week, Saturday. So stay tuned. Like, just pay attention because you will know when we'll go to your school as well. So thank you very much once again. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, Isaac. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you to the anti-gravity team for pulling this off. Thank you very much to all the attendees. I'm happy. I really appreciate your presence. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of today's event. Thank you for joining us. You can visit our website as many of you that would like to register on Akadabu, www.akadabu.com. And if you want to ask any question or make any inquiries, please send us a mail at akadabu at antigravitygroup.ng and we'll answer all of your questions. We also have a jam platform 
for every, for all of it. It's not it's not a jump platform. It's an Akadabu um, tertiary institution platform for all those who are going into the tertiary institutions. If you would like to join, you can drop your number on the chat box, and my colleagues will take it down and add it to the group chat. Thank you very much once again, and have a great day. Sorry, Isaac, would you like to say something? So, I, I, thank you so much. You've actually captured it all for me. Thank you so much. All participants, thank you so much. I'm really grateful. I'm excited. I've learned a whole lot. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next week. And yeah, stay blessed. Ayo, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, Isaac. You. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mommy. Bye. Have Bye. a great evening. Bye.